Megan here, and I am making sourdough this morning. I've got six loaves going out, and I thought it might be helpful to just like really quickly show you a few of my favorite things for making sourdough. By no means am I an expert. By no means is this the golden standard. These are just things that I have found that have made my life easier when it comes to making sourdough. So let me share them with you. First up, the jar that I keep my sourdough starter in. Now, you don't have to have this. It was very inexpensive. I think it was $6 at Walmart. I believe it's a two quart. It's a pretty hefty sized jar. I like it because it has this rubber gasket and this little flip top seal. So air can still move in and out, but the moisture stays in and no bugs or fruit flies or anything like that get into my starter. The other thing I recommend is having a rubber band on your discard or your starter. So this tells me where it was when I fed it versus how active it got after I fed it. Now I already stirred this. It was all the way up to the top. But let me just kind of show you what a fed starter looks like. And like I said, I've already popped all the bubbles, but you can see how it kind of looks like Swiss cheese. Like there's a whole lot of bubble action going on in there and it's kind of runny. That's good. So first thing on my list, get yourself a good jar. They're not expensive. And then the second thing on my list is this little paddle here, which I'm not going to really be able to show you. Kind of looks like a bubble wand to me, like something I would have had when I was a little kid. But I really like this because it is really good for mixing the flour and the water together in the first step of making your loaf. Now, better than a wooden spoon, better than a spatula, like just the way that the dough moves through it, also not expensive. I really like this. Okay. The next thing that I think you need is a kitchen scale. So when you make sourdough, it's not like other bread where you are just like adding a cup here, a cup there. This actually has to your ingredients have to be weighed. If you are off by a whole bunch or even not that much sometimes, your your sourdough loaf isn't going to be right. Like the texture is not, just not gonna be right. So I recommend having a scale. This is like the cheapest one that I could find on Amazon and I am obsessed with it. It can do grams, milliliters, ounces, pounds, and I think it was like $9. So I really like this scale, um, but I, I think you need one. Okay, the next thing that I think you need our proofing baskets. Okay, so my grandma is a really good baker and she used to bake all the time when I was little. And she had an old sock on her rolling pin. And I always used to think that was kind of weird and gross, but it always looked like this. Like it was always kind of floured and textured. And that was so that she could roll out her dough, roll out her cookies, and like the sock would keep everything from like sticking to it. So this is like my version of having a sock on my rolling pin. I love these baskets with the liners. Also not expensive. They can be found on Amazon or anywhere basically, but I recommend having them. You can get the banneton or the boule, basically the rectangle or the round. And I actually have like four of both because I think that they're really good. Okay, next on my list is I think that if you want to have the pretty pattern, I'll show you. All right, so you're baking your loaf and you want it to have like the pattern, like the little petals or anything like that. Mine got a big crack in it this time. I get that by brushing flour on it with this pastry brush and then carving or cutting the pattern with this little lathe. Now, both of these are really, really handy. They last forever. And um, I just think that they make such a pretty loaf. You could also use a scissor, you could use a knife, but I really like these. Now the next thing I want to show you is my Dutch oven, but they're too hot for me to grab them because I've got sourdough loaves sitting on my oven right now that I just pulled out. But I recommend getting like a, I don't know, a decently sized Dutch oven because when you bake your sourdough, it bakes at like 475 degrees. Oops. Oh. And uh, that's really, really, really hot. So if you have just like a normal pot or something, it's probably not going to work for sourdough. The other thing you could do is, um, so like when I say Dutch oven, I mean like either an enameled cast iron or like the traditional cast iron, the black ones. Either one of those are fine. Personally, I use the enameled ones just because they don't get as smoky in there um, because it is such a high heat. Um, what else do you need? You also need a good bread knife and I don't have mine out right now, so I can't show you, but I totally recommend investing in a good bread knife because once you start making a lot of sourdough, if you're not just like tearing it, um, it's kind of hard to cut with just a normal serrated knife. So those are my tips. Um, I also have a free ebook. 
So if you want to start making sourdough, I've got my no need sourdough recipe in there. And in my opinion, it's really good. I also share my sourdough focaccia and I think I also have some starter discard recipes like crepes. So grab my ebook off of my website, ninascamade.com. And if you like this, save it. Um, I can also just message me and I'll send you links if you want links to any of the things that I mentioned so that you can kind of, you know, ask me my honest opinions, which I just gave you. But, you know, if you have any questions, reach out. I love to talk about this stuff. Bye, Hazel. Have a great day, guys.